Okay, good morning. Hello. Um, this is intro to scrubbing into surgery. Yes, we are at quarantine time, so everything's covered up here. Uh, but we're going to go through and show uh, some steps on how to even get into the case first. Um, so if you're just putting on hats, there are different type of hats. There's a bouffant hat. If you have longer hair, there's a regular cap for shorter hair. Uh, there's even, if you have a beard, there are certain beard covers. Um, so just make sure um, or shave your beard um, if you don't want to wear the beard cover. So caps, shoe covers, those should all be found somewhere either in your locker room or outside of the OR. So right now we're just outside of all of the main ORs. So look for hat, mask, shoe covers either in the locker room or somewhere just outside of the OR. If you're going to take your normal cap and put it on, um, sometimes if you have a smaller head like I do, you have to fold a little bit of the brim. You can slide it on and then try to keep it as tight as you can in the back. And push it down. It should cover all of your hair. You should have your ears exposed. Uh, we've seen people wear it like this which I'm sure looks really attractive right now, but <laughs> you do not want any hair in the front visible. So cover everything up and keep it pretty snug. Once, yep. For females, so females have the bouffant caps. <clears throat> hair tie, hair has to be tied back out of your face completely. Bangs, we agree, can be cute, not cute in the OR. So any hair, just like the men's, has to be pulled back. Make sure that you're not leaving hair back down here. So bring a hair tie with you, pull it all the way up, all the way out of the way. Cap over from the top. Make sure it's catching all of those hairs behind you so that nothing is going to fall out and become unsterile anywhere. Does not have to cover your ears. One thing to note, girls, if you wear earrings, do not wear long dangly earrings. Don't wear hoops. Don't wear anything that can potentially swing and contaminate a C-arm or contaminate anything else. So make sure that bangs are covered and all of the hair around your head is covered. It's not gonna fall out anytime that you're moving around, bending over in the OR. Also make sure you're wearing the right color cap too. Uh, yes. Some students and residents, they are identified by white or red or whatever the hospital um, Yeah, is. if there's a special color you need to wear, it'll usually say a sign that says like students wear red caps. Um, we have two types of shoe covers. Dr. Pratt has a regular shoe cover, and then so, this is one for arthroscopy where you might be getting a little bit more wet. So regular shoe cover looks inside out. It's not, the grips are on the bottom, the white portion. So just make sure the seam goes towards the front and you're just gonna slip it directly over your shoes. Try to catch all the laces in there. You don't wanna go home with any goop or gunk on your shoes. So your pants should be large enough, long enough that they touch the top of the shoe cover. They should not be short and be up here. So make sure that those pants are long enough and that the shoe cover completely covers laces and all of your shoe. If you have a, a bloody amputation or an arthroscopic case, you may wanna get a little bit more uh, shoe cover protection here. So it looks like the shape of a boot for the, the boot covers. You're gonna slide on and it's a little bit harder to put over your heel there, but then you're gonna pull it up kind of like you're putting on a little pant there. And this will keep you protected if there's gonna be a lot more fluid during the case. To take them off, what you wanna do is you ideally wanna keep your hands away from the bottom. So you're gonna come and inside out it if you have to do it twice there and then you have the inside of your cover that you can then throw away so you're not actually touching the bottom. So now we're gonna move on to a mask right here. There are many different types of masks and you should try all of them while you're a student um, to figure out what works best for you. Um, these are just some basic masks. Some of them have glue or adhesive or sticky adhesive on the top there so it sticks to your face and that may, face and that may prevent fog from going up into your glasses. Um, some of them have the shield built in. Uh, if you do have a shield built in, it may be too close to your face so you can still bend it out if you need to. Um, but first, in putting on a mask, you may want to bend the nose a little bit so it sticks to your face a little bit more, or contours to your face. You're going to put it up top, tie, 
on the top of your head, and then around your neck here. And if afterwards, if you think it's too tight, you can pull down a little bit. If you need to pull down, you can loosen it up. Sometimes keeping the bottom more loose can actually allow a little bit of ventilation. So that way you can breathe and the heat from your breath can come out the bottom instead of up top and fog up your glasses. And then you may want to contour the wire up top so it fits your face a little bit better. Um, some common things that we see, if you make it a little too loose up top, and it starts to come down a little bit too much, just make sure that your nose is not fully exposed and it isn't coming down too far. So try to keep it stuck to the top. And females, the other advantage of having your hair back in a ponytail is you basically have a stopper for the top of your mask. So once we have our mask on, we're gonna walk into, the mask doesn't need to be on actually until you walk into the OR. So if you wanna walk around before the case, ready to go, you can have your mask down, um, but you really should switch out a mask in between each case. Um, but now we're going to go into a sterile area, which is usually marked by a line. Grab eye protection next. Here we have frames and every hospital is a little bit different, so we don't throw them away here. Um, but what you're going to do with these ones is they just snap on to the little nubs. Some frames slide on. If they slide on, you, there's two holes on each side to slide through forward. So it's just gonna pop them through the nubs. Try all different types and try the ones with the shield just so you can figure out what you like. Um, once you have these on though, you slide it over. Things you want to watch out for is to not let them be sitting on top of your ears, getting too close. Sometimes it's nice to give a little bit of space so that way you can not fog them up. Um, the tighter you have it, the more likely you are. But try everything different to see what works for you. Um, we do see sometimes where people walk into the OR like this and forget once they're sterile. So make sure you have them down. Um, if you notice somebody's walking into the OR and if you're not scrubbed in, you can actually help them. Um, and then once we're having our selections of uh, what to scrub in with. We have povidone iodine here for your betadine comparison, and then your PCMX. You may also have chlorhexidine too. Going back to eye protection, with the eye protection, if this gets dirty and you're between cases, make sure you switch it out. So hang on to the frames, but you can always switch this out for every case if it gets blood, gunk, sweat, whatever that is. So make sure that this eye shield is always clean and clear, especially going into a new case. So once you do open up a pack, sorry, I got too close there. You're gonna peel it open and then you have your sponge with your bristles and then your nail pick. So what you wanna do is find a cute, find a nail that's got a little bit more here and you're gonna scrape underneath it so this either, gets done first prior to scrubbing. Either side of it, get everything out of there, or you can keep your nails really, really short like I do. After this, there's usually a trash can right here. You want to throw it away. Put your wrapper away. Go over here. And then, wet your sponge first. Get it nice and foamy. You're going to wet your arms, and you're going to start off by Scrubbing your fingers, both sides, get every side of every finger. Everybody always asks how long should you scrub in for. The right answer is however long your attendings or residents do and just a tad longer than that. Uh, you may see a lot of people don't do five minutes, um, which is what we originally learned, um, but that's because we do know that there was, we, there's a amount of dirty water here, so if you want to Scrub in one time to be in the day, that's okay. Dry off and then use the sterilium or the Avogard in between each case. Um, that's our preference, but do where, wherever you're at, do what they want you to do. Um, but while I finish scrubbing in here, we're gonna show you how to open up your gloves and your gowns in the room. So when you're going into the OR and you're opening your own gown or your own gloves, we've got gloves here and gown here. So the gown's already been taken out of its sterile pack. 
but we haven't completely exposed it and unwrapped it yet. So you can see there's a triangular tab here. So first step would be to take that tab, pull up and out. You'll find yet another tab here and then another tab here. So now I have my sterile gown inside. I can pull this tab back out of the way, pull the rest of it out of the way. And on my back table, I can now drop my sterile gown. This gets discarded. Gloves are next. So gloves from the top, grip both sides well, start peeling. You've got your sterile gloves inside. You're gonna basically open them up just like a flower. As you expose them, you can flip and drop directly onto the table. Be careful when you're opening gloves that you're not starting this way and ripping. That can drop the glove. That you're not starting to open the glove, trying to toss. So just slowly, slowly over the table, let it drop. It's okay that you get close to the table as the gloves drop. Better that and the glove lands on the table than to be back here, try and toss it and you miss the table and waste gloves. So now you have sterile gloves that are open, sterile gown that's open on your field. And then we'll show you how to go ahead and self-gown and self-glove as soon as he finishes scrubbing in. So one thing I forgot is after you're done using the bristle on your hand, 